Hey guys, Dean Poke here. Welcome back to the channel. I hope everyone's doing well. And today we'll be doing a Total War Warhammer 3 tier list. So this is a tier list regarding my experience with the game. So I have about 3,500 hours with the game. And I'll only be judging factions that I've played. Now you may think in 3,500 hours I would have tried out all the factions. I've tried out maybe 80% of them. The way my play style is, I play legendary campaigns. And I pretty much master a faction before I move on to the next faction, which means all legendary lords of that particular faction until I learn all the strengths, all the weaknesses, um, chases, exploits, you name it. And then I move on to the next faction, the next faction, the next faction. So um, obviously this is going to be uh, using legendary as a baseline and then I'll be rating it, but it's a, it's a veteran player difficulty, good player difficulty, average or beginner. So we'll start off with the Beastmen. Beastmen are... I would say towards the stronger tier of factions in Total Warhammer 3. And they're very easy to pick up. You pretty much destroy everything, erect her stones, uh, earn currency and recruit more armies. Very, very, very straightforward. I would highly, highly recommend these campaigns. If you're someone a beginner, you want to try your hand out as a legendary because the risk is very small. The reward is great. So if you lose a settlement or a herdstone, meh, so what? You just erect another one and it's fairly, fairly straightforward. Uh, another faction that would say it's very beginner friendly if you want to try your hand the legendary difficulty is the orc campaigns they're not difficult campaigns um it's plug and play mechanics are not complicated you're just pretty much rolling over everything and just destroying stuff especially with grimgore very beginner friendly very very strong skarsnik is a little bit more difficult due to the area in which you begin but um, you have all the tools at your disposal to snowball out of control. So maybe Skarsnik is more like an average player campaign. But all the other ones, they, they're really not, not hard at all. So Orcs and um, Beastmen, definitely beginner faction here. Highly, highly recommend if, you, if you're someone that's willing to challenge yourselves but you're a beginning player, go for these factions. You will not be disappointed. Very, very forgiving even if you do make mistakes. All right. Next up, it's my absolute favorite faction, and that is the Chaos Dwarves. In my personal opinion, this is a perfectly balanced faction. You know, the power creep was not huge, the in-depth mechanic. They just, they're just a good race altogether. Um, however, the, the three campaigns are very, very different to each other and based on difficulty. So I feel like Zatan the Black is the easiest, followed by Astrobath Iron Hand and Drazor the Ashen being the most challenging because if you play Drazor the Ashen campaign, a lot can go wrong and you can get besieged on all sides. So I would say uh, um, Drazor the Ashen probably need to be like a good player to play this campaign. It's not the easiest of campaigns. But um, Zatan the Black, even a beginner can pick it up. However, due to the dwarf, uh, Chaos Dwarf mechanics, maybe it's better if you're an average player, just so you understand better Excuse me, um, how the mechanics work. So I would, I would put this as an average player faction to play on Legendary, but um, Drazo would be action perhaps for, for, for a good player because, as I said, it can get pretty hectic. Okay. Next up we have Skaven. Skaven are like your middle of the pack race now. They were a lot stronger in Warhammer 2 than they were in Warhammer 3. So I would say Snitch, Ikid Claw, probably the two strongest Skaven factions. Very easy to play, very cool mechanics, shadowy dealings, and the workshop for Ikid Claw is just amazingly powerful some may argue that the shadowy dealings for snitch is actually more powerful but it doesn't no matter who you pick you can't go wrong so he's he starts in cafe very very good but i would just because the food mechanic alone i wouldn't recommend this for a beginning player to play on legendary unless you really understand scaven so they're pretty much like borderline between beginner and average i'll put them on average for now but I mean, there is, there is a power gap there between some of the Skaven factions, so you do be careful. They're not equally as powerful. My personal favorite is Clan Molder. Very, very good. Focuses on, like, um, monstrous units. Just an awesome, awesome campaign. I wish most of the factions were as flashed out as the Skaven, but unfortunately that's just not the case. 
Okay, next up we have Dark Elves, super, super powerful, super powerful, mechanics are very easy now, you don't need to be a uh, financial analyst just to understand the slave mechanics, very strong, would highly recommend, uh, if you do like range units, then these guys are for you, you know, very powerful with the um, Black Arcs, just, just, I don't know, just, they, they sit in a good place at the moment. Surely they can use some further work, but I'm, I'm content with how they play. They are very strong. I, I like them over the high elves as well. It's just the armor piercing. Even though you suffer a range at the beginning, but once you get all your technologies, you can boost those shades to infinity and beyond. And holy moly, they do some damage. And, and they're also very decent in melee as well. And they're only like, I think, what, a, like two, T3 t, t or T2? something ridiculous last you have shades of t2 i think the, the standard ones and the t3 for the advanced ones extremely extremely powerful awesome legendary lords malice Darkblade being my favorite i i've been reading his book lately and it's just freaking amazing it just gives you that you know that bond with the character just just it makes it that much better um next up warriors of chaos oh just these guys are busted man this is the easiest faction in the game and perhaps the most strongest factions in the game. Just like the Skaven, though, they're, they're, there is a power gap there. Bellacor, clear number one. Um, uh, what's his name? The Ever Chosen, right behind him. It's it's not as by a mar lot, long margin, right? I mean, Archeon is super, super powerful. Same mechanics as Bellacor, can confederate these guys, or vassalize them, whatever you call it. But. And then there's Festus. I think Festus is almost as good as Archeon because Nurgle has the best laws of heroes. Awesome lore of magic. Strongest heroes. Strongest lords. Super tanky. Super durable. High damage. Just freaking amazing, man. Kolek is also not bad. Chaos Undivided. Okay, so if you're a beginner, all these factions, you can't go wrong. I mean, but these ones here are the easiest. So if you're going to try your hand the legendary difficulty, go for these guys. Easy mechanics. Easy campaigns. Are they enjoyable though? Oh, I don't know about that. I mean that that's entirely up to you. Cool. Um then we have the dwarves. And and this will be across the board. I feel Togrim, Grudge Barrel, which is my latest campaign, can get a little bit crazy because you can get besieged on all side by Skarsnik. Uh, you have Tredge, Craven Tail, Clan Wars is going to come at you at some stage. Uh, there's a Grim Prophet next door as well. So it's very heavily based on like external circumstances, how Chaos Dwarfs perform, how the generic Orc faction below you performs, are they going to declare war on you or not. So it can get a little bit hectic. So I'll just put that you have to be a good player for this one. The White Dwarf, super, super easy. Um, and the rest of the dwarfs as well. I'd say, sorry, I'd say you, 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 average probably, just above beginner. Not super complicated faction mechanics. The grudge, it had got got reworked, but the book of grudges, sorry, got reworked. But still, I'd say an average player, just a little bit above beginner. If you're gonna do legendary campaign for the dwarfs, super 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 powerful now though. I mean, they're just the tier one units can auto resolve pretty much anything, and that's just crazy in itself. Um, high elves, super super strong. I would I would rate them as an also as beginner borderline average. Sorry, average borderline beginner should I say? Super powerful factions. You can complete the whole game with just the beginner arch archer just spamming them. Um, there is one here that I'm going to put towards good, and once again, it depends on external circumstances, and that's Imric. This is my favorite campaign out of all the High Elves, but, but, you got the Skaven there, you have the Chaos Dwarfs there, then you have um, Nurgle, you have the Vampires, this can get out of control very, very fast. No one likes you. It's going to be a while before you see a friendly face. Clan Mob's going to push in on you. Tretch Cram Cattell is going to push in on you. It's just, yeah, you're going to get besieged on all sides. And probably a, a good player. Maybe even, depending, maybe even a veteran player 
for Imric. This in Total War Warhammer 2 was even harder. But it just de depends on your luck. So it can be anywhere between good and veteran play there. But nonetheless, you have all the tools at your disposal. Even more so in Total War Warhammer 3. So very strong faction. Your finance is going to be shot at the start. But eventually, eventually you will pick it up. Cool, 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 cool. Um, next up, High Elves. Super easy. Perhaps second or third strongest faction in the game. Just disgustingly easy to, to play. Very powerful. No one's going to stop you early game. A pretty much crap on everyone. Faction mechanics. Not exactly a, a rocket science. Eh, yeah, I just feel like this faction here in particular is, is super, super strong and very beginner friendly. And it'll give you a different flavor. So from Orcs, I feel like these, these factions here have a very good indicator and giving beginner players a different sort of taste of, of different flavors of Warhammer 3. And, and, and that's a good thing. That's definitely a good thing. All right, I'll, next I'll go up with Nurgle. Nurgle is perhaps... Should I say Cougar Play Father is maybe like my top five favorite campaigns. I did this before the update and I pretty much only ran heroes and lord stacks. And I gave Kugath all of his uh, little minions. But aside from that, all my armies were just lords and heroes. And you just roll over everyone. Cathay doesn't have an answer for you. The vampires don't have an answer for you. You you clap the, the ogres back to oblivion. It's just... It, they're in, insanely strong, but they're not exactly an easy uh, faction to pick up. So for Kugath, I would say pre-rework, you would have to be a good player, maybe even borderline veteran, too, if you want, really want to snowball. Now an average player can pick it up, and it will be fine. Um, now for the other two, though, it gets a little bit interesting because... So Epidemius My work is a he's, he's a little bit easier than Nurgle. You spawn in a much more favorable place. Yeah, you have Malice Darkblade, you have Daniel up there, but so what? I'll also put down as average. However, Tamakan beginner, because Tamakan is a powerhouse. You get super strong faction abilities. Your finances aren't the strongest at the start, but they don't need to be. You just you have that one army. And you roll over, roll over everyone in your path. I did this um, on Legendary and I pretty much used Tamakan and two of his um, commanders, which are like Legendary heroes. And I pretty much soloed a, a 40 stack of Astragoth Iron Hand. It was freaking insane, man. Like crazy, crazy, crazy powerful. And it's all because you get good lore of magic, you get healing, tanky heroes. As soon as any battle turns into Battle of Attrition, you'll win. Like no one's going to match you. Very, very strong. Oh, sorry, I forgot uh, Mal Mal Malachi McKyson here. Beginner. Top two or three strongest factions in the game at the moment. Extremely, extremely powerful. Very easy to pick up. Very good for beginners if you want to try the dwarves. Awesome faction mechanics. Super easy to learn. Definitely a beginner there. Okay. Then we have the Tomb Kings. Oh man, Sethra used to be one of my favorite campaigns in Total Warhammer 2. I feel like they, they got fallen behind and forgotten. So if you want to get a proper enjoyment out of these guys, you probably have to be a good player. It's just, it's not that it's a challenging campaign, it's just crappy, outdated mechanics. That's what's holding these guys back. Okay, same thing goes for the Vampire Counts. These guys are absolutely trashed here now. They were so good. With the gunpowder in Total Warhammer 2, those um, uh, mortars used to wreck armies. Your gunners were good, even your like your chip, and your economy was much better. You could like stack Necroflex Colossus early on, and then they just went and nerfed the crap out of it. Took the fun out of these factions. These factions are now horrible to play, so you would have to be a good player, borderline veteran, to really push these factions and actually be competitive if that's even possible. Plus, I mean, just would not really, really, really recommend them. It's entirely up to you whether you want to choose to put yourself through that torture. But right now, they're not in a good place. And I'm hoping that very soon they can be in a good place because they are one of my favorite factions. They were one of my favorite factions. 
but they just got absolutely crapped on. Um, another good faction now, actually, on the other end of the spectrum, is Cathay. Very strong. Your early units, you can you can run them to late game and still dominate. Very good economy. Very fun faction mechanics. But I would place it just above beginner because there is a little bit to learn with the mechanics. But very strong. Um, they they got better lords and heroes now. Still not the best, but better. So they've come a long way since the Yuan Boy update. He's probably the best lord to play out of all, all of them. But Miao Yun is probably my, my favorite one. Okay. Then we have Kislev. Kislev is, in my opinion, Catherine, the most enjoyable campaign in Total War Warhammer 3. Because you're a powerful faction, but you're surrounded by enemies. And you gotta help out your friends in order to insulate yourself from the chaos waste. So you're helping yourself, but you're also helping others. So it can get a little bit stressful. Could be a steep learning curve. So I would put this as a veteran player. You would get a lot more enjoyment out of it if you're a veteran player rather than an average or a good player. Because it can get a little bit difficult. You have um, Clan Wars. You have a Zazel there. Uh, you have a Norse Confaction there. And pretty much everyone hates you. Boris gets wiped, wiped out early. Prague is a hit or miss. Then Chaos Dwarfs come knocking. Um, you have Festus. It can spiral out of control. But if you get your um, business in order early on, then you are pretty much set for the rest of the campaign. And your allies will also thrive under you. So very strong factions, but um, just definitely a bit of a learning curve there. Then you have the Changeling, the probably one of the worst campaigns in the game because it's just so powerful. All reward, no risk. You literally cannot lose this campaign and you can just steamroll over everyone. So, zero on the fun factor, but definitely beginner friendly. Cool, cool, cool. Then we have the Empire. So, this is an interesting one the Empire. Bring me they... to my men. Look, it depends who you play. So if you play as Volkmar, straightforward campaign. Marcus Wolfhard, crap faction mechanics, but straightforward campaign. So your average player can definitely go and do these campaigns. Battle of the Guild, very strong. Asper the Dragon, very strong. Emperor Calfrance, meh. You know, he's benefited from, from the... Um, from the update, definitely Empire is a lot easier to play now. So I think an average player can enjoy the Empire and really put in a good campaign there. So would, would recommend if you haven't already played uh, an Empire campaign post-update, give it out. Carl France is perhaps the most favorite campaign of any, uh, I'm sorry, out of the majority of the, the Total War Warhammer players. Definitely can go, can't go wrong there. Vampire counts. Beginner friendly, not super powerful, but powerful enough. Absolute pain in the bum to deal with. If you're against them, they just keep coming back. So super, super strong. If you're someone that's looking for a bit of a diverse campaign, would recommend. But uh, they're not exactly the most fun campaign. They have some really cool legendary lords, like Vlad and and um, Elizabeth, and then there's. Uh, Manfred, who is uh, yeah, it's just a big crybaby, but as I said, beginner friendly, not hard. I think the um, the strongest vampire counts campaign has to be Ghost. You can just use zombies. I think I've done a full map com completion in less than 90 turns on legendary campaign. You'll be just pumping armies out of your ass, and yeah, super, super, super strong. Um, Zinch, uh, look, this is a, this is a crappy, crappy campaign. I'll say you probably have to be a good player to get enjoyment out of this. Are you just stuck in the corner of the world where no one cares about? Uh, you, you come across the, um, the lizard man early on. And it's not a challenge. It, it really isn't. So, Oxyodal will definitely push you early on but it's not the end of the world 
you have the tools at your disposal, just shit, a really, really shit um, recovery rate. So healing your arm is absolute nightmare. I was running Lords and Heroes only because just to avoid that problem, but it's just a boring campaign. You go from one side of the Chaos Waste to the other side of the South Chaos Waste. Then you push towards Techless and the Beast, man. It's just a slog. There's, there's, there's no fun there. There is no no fun there. Um, corn average because crap economy. I only run Lords and Heroes when I run corn and I just roll over everyone. And they allows me to populate and play corn the way it's not meant to be played. But if you're running armies, you have to be constantly fighting because your your economy is just horrible, and you have to keep destroying things in order to survive. So fun if you're into that kind of thing, but I'll say this is average, average at best. For every sorry, average player at best. Um, Mother Stankia, uh, say good player. You're surrounded by dark elves, but you you actually even average. You you're given all tools, good mechanics, nothing groundbreaking. But yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll probably start off with her if you're going to practice Kislev before you move on to these ones. Because these ones are a bit bit more difficult. Slanesh. Ooh, I would say you definitely, definitely have to be like a veteran or a good player to really get get rolling with, um, with Slanesh. And the reason why I'm saying this is because you're coming up against hard counter factions playing as Nakari, so you have speed on your side, but if it turns into Battle of Attrition, you're done. If you get exposed to Elven Archers, you're done. But once you get swords through that initial challenge, it's a breeze from there on. Um, for the rest of these campaigns, I'm not going to comment on, because even though I've played Lizardmen, I've played Norska, Embratonia, even Ogres, I am not an expert at them yet, and if I'm not an expert at a campaign, I'm not going to rate it. So I would have to have sunk in enormous amount of hours for me to give you this opinion. I'm not just going to put them on tier list for the sake of putting them on tier list. It defeats the purpose. But anyways, those are my thoughts. Obviously some campaigns are tougher than others. Whether they have shitty mechanics, bad economy, or just very hard starting positions. That's just my take on it, guys. As I said, much easier in Total Warhammer 3. But, um... Yeah. Anyways, please let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and I hope to catch you in the next video. Peace.